the grace of God has appeared, bringing salvation to all. Good morning and welcome to this service of morning prayer on the fourth Sunday after the Epiphany. Believe it or not, we are moving into that time of year when we need to think about the Easter General Vestry. The annual review of the General Register of Vestry members will be taking place on Monday the 8th of March at half past seven. Now it may be in the parish hall, but there again, it may be on Zoom, depending on what the restrictions are at that time. Anyone who wishes to register as a general vestry person should complete a form of declaration. And under the diocesan regulations, in order to be a member of the general vestry, a person has to have subscribed to church funds through a one-off payment or through regular giving, both of which are through the church financial system. In other words, in a manner which can be shown. And so if you do want to register, I will ask Anne Fenton, Secretary to the Select Vestry, to send you a form. I am saddened this morning to announce the death of one of our oldest parishioners, Mrs Ethel McCamley. And Ethel was one of the well-known Dixon family who have worshipped here for many, many years. And from looking at the parish registers, Ethel was baptised here on the 10th of December 1922. So I pass on my sympathy to the entire family and especially to her son, Robert. I'm delighted to be joined this morning by Anne Rossa, and Anne will be reading the lessons and also helping me with the responses. We begin with the opening hymn, Lord, as I wake, I turn to you. Thanksgiving. 
to confess our sins and to receive God's forgiveness, to hear his holy word proclaimed, to bring before him our needs and the needs of the world, and to pray that in the power of his spirit we may serve him and know the greatness of his love. Let us confess our sins to God our Father. Heavenly Father, we have sinned against you and against our neighbour in thought and word and deed, through negligence, through weakness, through our own deliberate fault, by what we have done and by what we have failed to do. We are truly sorry and repent of all our sins. For the sake of your Son, Jesus Christ, who died for us, forgive us all that is past and grant that we may serve you in newness of life to the glory of your name. Amen. Almighty God, who forgives all who truly repent, have mercy on you, pardon and deliver you from all your sins, confirm and strengthen you in all goodness and keep you in eternal life through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. O Lord, open our lips. And our mouth will proclaim your praise. O God, make speed to save us. O Lord, make haste to help us. Glory to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Spirit. As it was in the beginning, is now, and shall be forever. Amen. Praise the Lord. The Lord's name be praised. Word of the Lord. 
Thanks be to God. Thanks be to God. We affirm our faith in the words of the Apostles' Creed. I believe in God, the Father Almighty, creator of heaven and earth. I believe in Jesus Christ, God's only Son, our Lord, who was conceived by the Holy Spirit, born of the Virgin Mary, suffered under Pontius Pilate, 
was crucified, died, and was buried. He descended to the dead. On the third day, he rose again. He ascended into heaven. He is seated at the right hand of the Father, and he will come again to judge the living and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. Amen. The Lord be with you. And also with you. Let us pray. Lord, have mercy. Christ, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, the power and the glory, for ever and ever. Amen. Show us your mercy, O Lord. And grant us your salvation. O Lord, save the Queen. And grant her government wisdom. Let your ministers be clothed with righteousness. And let your servants shout for joy. O Lord, save your people. And bless those whom you have chosen. Give peace in our time, O Lord. And let your glory be over all the earth. O God, may clean our hearts within us. And renew us by your Holy Spirit. The Collect of the Fourth Sunday after the Epiphany. Creator God, who in the beginning commanded the light to shine out of darkness, we pray that the light of the glorious Gospel of Christ may dispel the darkness of ignorance and unbelief. Shine into the hearts of all your people and reveal the knowledge of your glory in the face of Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. O Lord, our Heavenly Father, almighty and ever-living God, we give you thanks for bringing us safely to this day. Keep us from falling into sin or running into danger, and in all things guide us to know and do your will, through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. Heavenly Father, in whom we live and move and have our being, we humbly pray that your Holy Spirit may so guide and govern us, that in all the cares and occupations of our daily life, we may never forget your presence, but may remember that we are always walking in your sight through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. Almighty God, we pray for all in authority within the Church. We pray for bishops, priests and deacons that they may exercise their authority with due care and concern for your people. May they learn from the mistakes of the past and recognize that all true power and authority comes only from you. We ask this through our Lord and Saviour Jesus Christ. Amen. Keep us, good Lord, under the shadow of your mercy. In this time of uncertainty and distress, sustain and support the anxious and fearful, and lift up all who are brought low, that we may rejoice in your comfort, knowing that nothing can separate us from your love in Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. And we continue to pray for hospital staff and medical researchers. Gracious God, give skill, sympathy and resilience to all who are caring for the sick and your wisdom to those searching for a cure. Strengthen them with your spirit that through their work many will be restored to health through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. We pray this morning for all those who are ill all those in hospital, those who are being cared for at home and in nursing homes. Lord God, whose Son, Jesus Christ, understood people's fear and pain before they spoke of them, we pray for all those within this parish who are ill. We 
pray for those who are being cared for at home and we pray for those in hospital surround the frightened with your tenderness give strength to those in pain hold the weak in your arms of love and give hope and patience to those who are recovering we ask this through the same Jesus Christ our Lord Amen And we remember all those who have died as a result of the pandemic. And especially this morning, we remember Ethel McCanley. Gracious God, as we remember before you the thousands who have died, surround us and all who mourn with your strong compassion. Be gentle with us in our grief. Protect us from despair and give us grace to persevere and face the future with hope. In Jesus Christ, our risen Lord. Amen. And the grace of our Lord Jesus Christ and the love of God and the fellowship of the Holy Spirit be with us all evermore. Amen. May the words of my mouth and the meditation of all our hearts be now and always acceptable in your sight, O Lord, our strength, and our Redeemer. Amen. From pop stars to reality stars, the society that we live in today is saturated with celebrities. They sing some of our favourite songs, play our favourite sports, and even write some of our cookbooks. It's almost impossible to navigate through our daily lives without crossing paths with a celebrity name or two. As a society, we have become engrossed in celebrity culture, but opinions on this topic are divided. Whilst some follow every move of their favourite celebs, others despise their very existence. But whatever your opinion, there's no denying that celebrities have become an important part of modern culture, especially with the rise of social media and various other platforms. The biggest problem that I have with celebrity culture is when I ask the question, what defines a, cele a celebrity? In years gone by, it was uh, someone who was made famous because of a particular gift or talent they possessed and they just didn't become famous overnight. They had to work for their success. We can think of countless numbers of musicians and singers who played working men's clubs for years before they were ever noticed. We think of artists who only achieved fame many years after their deaths. We think of some politicians and state figures who achieved fame because of something they did for their country and for their people. But now fame means something else. It means instant success. It means instant wealth. It means instant popularity. And with the rise of programmes like Big Brother and other reality TV shows, a nobody becomes somebody for no apparent reason and can also become extremely influential on people's lives. And the younger generation in particular have grown up with this celebrity culture and often try to emulate their favourite star. Today, our Gospel reading talks about fame, the fame of Jesus, which was spreading around the region of Galilee. Now, his fame was different than that of today's celebrity culture. He was famous because he spoke with authority. There was authority in his teaching, authority that came from no human power, Instead, authority from a much higher power, his Father in heaven. And no one had ever witnessed this kind of authority before. 
Certainly the scribes of his day were learned and educated men, but they lacked one thing that was evident in Jesus, his authority. Many times throughout the scriptures, we find Jesus being questioned and even harassed about his teaching and also about his claims. But today, in the sight of the synagogue officials and worshippers, Jesus' authority was evident. There are two kinds of authority present in today's reading from the Gospel of Mark. There is the authority of God present in the person of Jesus. But there is also a kind of authority in the unclean spirit in the person of the possessed man. And this unclean spirit has taken over the man's life. It had robbed him of his dignity, his place in the community, his value as a human being. The authority of the unclean spirit is ultimately in control of his life. It has him to believe that he's worthless and he's powerless. But then there is this other authority, an authority that wants to restore this man to his rightful place in the community and to give him back the life he deserves. The authority of God through Jesus rebukes the unclean spirit and the man is healed. This story is a fine example of how authority can be used for both good and evil. Authority in the wrong hands can be an extreme, extremely dangerous thing indeed. We all know people who have been given a little bit of authority and suddenly it goes to their head. They act selfishly, unjustly, and use their power to lord it over others. And this happens in all walks of life, in business, in politics, in the workplace, and unfortunately, in the church. The church doesn't exactly have a good track record when it comes to authority and how that authority is used. The church has often and still continues to use its power to discriminate, to exclude and to exercise its own prejudices. Recently, we have been hearing about the terrible part that the church played in the mother and baby homes in Ireland, North and South. And the Church of Ireland has spoken of its shame that church members stigmatised women and children in the care of mother and baby homes. The Archbishop of Armagh said, Having had a chance to read the relevant chapters of the report, I acknowledge with shame that members of the Church of Ireland stigmatised women and children in a way which was very far removed from Christian principles and which resulted in an unloving, cold and judgmental attitude towards pregnant women who deserved better. And so that apology was made just a number of days ago about something that happened in the not too distant past. I wonder what the church will have to apologise for in the next 10 or 20 years. Will bishops and archbishops ever learn from the mistakes of the past and actually realise that not all authority is of God or from God? Jesus used his authority to heal, to build up, to make a person whole again just as we have seen in today's Gospel. It's little wonder that the fame of Jesus spread throughout the surrounding region. Never before had people seen authority used in a positive way. Jesus always made sure that the least of his followers, the blind, the weak, the poor, the despised women and the neglected children, 
were given equal status with those who had the power and who were respected as religious authorities. Jesus showed the most vulnerable in society that God loved them and that God had no patience with hypocrisy and self-righteousness. That was his authority, the authority of the true prophet. He spoke and lived and acted in the name of the one who sent him to the world, to us, and this is the one on whom the light of Epiphany shines today. Amen. Spirit be with you and remain with you always. Amen. <laughs>